This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. For the next four hours, I'm your host and your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the Exxon. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the x comes to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern. Talkstar Radio Network, x Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and on Star Cable. Toll-free worldwide, 1-800-610-7035. Email address is x at x TV.com And on MSN Messenger, x TV at Hotmail.com. Our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. Exxon Nation, my first guest tonight is Connie Good. And for the past 37 years, Connie has been helping hundreds of men and women obtain a daily reprieve from excessive overeating, overindulgent, and overconsumption. Connie participates in support groups all over the country. She has a distinctive understanding of the problem, repercussions, and ramifications of their afflictions and is dedicated to providing assistance to those who still suffer. Joining me now is our friend, Connie Good. And Connie, welcome to the X-Zone. Great to be here, Rob. Thank you so much. Hey, Connie, uh, tell me, um, how did you get started in this? Well, I'm glad you asked that. That's a very interesting story. When I was a child, I felt very sensitive and... Mm -hmm. Food became a useful substance for me that, sa- that satiated my need for acceptance. And eventually I became an excessive eater because I had a sense of never getting enough and I had a belief that no amount of foods, friends, clothes, financial resources could satisfy me. I had a mental deprivation attitude. And when I was in my early 20s, I started to attend programs for recovering Mm -hmm. overeaters and overindulgers, and I found a lot of acceptance and receptivity there. And I was able eventually to break free from the affliction, and I was encouraged to explore my individual potential and to expand, and the support group stopped the wound of my excessive indulgence, and it opened up a doorway for me to get an unlimited connection with the world. So I found courage to value myself, and just through listening to people and internalizing what I learned, I ended up developing a roadmap for change. And we're going to be talking about that roadmap over the next hour, Exonation. Connie is also the author of Little Gifts of Sustainable Commitment. Her website is www.sustainablecontentment.com. That's sustainablecontentment.com. The name of her book is Little Gifts of Sustainable Contentment. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break in two minutes as the X-Zone continues. We're right here 
on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition, Euro High Definition Radio, and of course, Star Cable. We'll be back in two minutes after this commercial break. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Welcome back, Exo Nation. My guest is Connie Good, and uh, she's become something of a heroine for those men and women, um, you know, who have they're into over excessive eating, over indulgence, and over consumption. And um, her journey uh, to that place wasn't very easy, as we discussed in her early years. Despite her career success in the investment management industry, Connie was a self-described excessive overeater and overindulger. When she finally got a reprieve from the cravings, she began to get so many questions from people with similar life challenges, she decided to share her private affirmation in her book entitled, Little Gifts of Sustainable Contentment. Her website, www.sustainablecontentment.com. And Connie, thanks very much for joining us. It's a pleasure talking to you. Great to be here. Tell me the path that you took writing Little Gifts of Sustainable Contentment? Well, I started to listen to other people's stories and Mm -hmm. observe other people talking about themselves in some of these support groups. And I could see their greatness and how fabulous they were. I would say, wow, that woman is so great, or she's so powerful, or she's exciting. Yet they were talking about themselves in very self-limiting ways. They couldn't see their own gifts. And occasionally someone would say something that was so profound, I had to just write it down. I said, oh, I've got to remember that. That just resonates with me at a very deep level. So I began writing on little cards. And eventually I was struck by how I would read these cards maybe two or three days later, and I would find myself returning to a place of contentment. And oh, as an affirmation, the affirmations grew and grew, and the cards became taller and taller, until eventually they became so unwieldy, I had to put them together in a book so that they would be easy to use. Tell me, Connie, what are affirmations? Well, affirmations are a series of powerful passages. They're organized by the 365-day calendar year, Mm -hmm. and they bring to light the very positive or negative consequences 
of our thinking or our actions. They're designed to be spoken in the moment before we make a choice. And Little Gifts of Sustainable Contentment shows us whether the choice we are about to make will move us closer to our goals or take us further away. So by honestly studying these affirmations and concepts, we take back the power to create our lives exactly as we desire. Now, there are many books on this subject out there. What makes your book so unique? Well, I think what makes this book unique is that I have come to learn that we are all vibrational beings. And everything operates in a vibrational frequency. And you could think of contentment as a radio station, a radio frequency. Say it's channel number 999. Okay. And these affirmations, when they're said out loud, they tend to generate a vibrational attunement to channel 999. It resonates with channel 999. And when you are saying these affirmations out loud, automatically you begin to feel a shift in your feelings, in your emotions. And it creates a vibrational record or a neural pathway. And you can, after you practice for a while, you can pretty instantly get to that point of contentment if you just say them every day. So why is it so important to recite out these affirmations out loud? Well, when they're recited out loud, it reinforces the message. Mm -hmm. I think that it's very important to be committed to creating the things you desire in your life, whether you want success in your business, whether you want more intimacy in your marriage, or more health and fitness in your body. These affirmations are for people who want to take back the reins of their life and move deliberately toward the direction of contentment. So when we say them out loud, it brings us face to face with the reality that we are the ones creating our day-to-day lives. And the only thing that I know for sure is that suffering is the result of confusion. And when I say I want something Mm -hmm. verbally and continue making choices, that will head me in the appropriate direction. What would be the age group for readers and, of your book and for the use of the method that you have in your book? I think the best way to answer that is that anyone who wants to focus on improving an area of their life where they're mm-hmm. struggling, where they feel anxious, unfulfilled, or where they aren't creating the results they desire then they can create a clear goal about what they would like to experience in this area of their life. Once they have their goal defined, whether it's to start their business or get into a relationship, they can spend a few minutes a day at the beginning of each day bringing their vision clearly into their awareness and then carry the affirmations with them throughout the day to reinforce the choices that they want to make to bring them closer to their goals. You know, I, I'm just thinking about all the children who are excessive eaters these days because it seems that kids that would rather sit down, play their little computer games than actually go outside and exercise or, or ride their bikes or do physical exercise. And, and even when schools are now reinstating physical fitness, kids are opting out. So would your book... And your method help these kids who are overeaters, who are over lazy in my book. Would it help them? Most definitely. Most of my acquaintances are seekers. Mm-hmm. You know, they're seeking relief from overeating. They're seeking relief from the emotional pain that may be triggering the overeating. Some are lonely. Some are unhappy. They don't know why, but they want to be instrumental in making changes. And they're searching to find empowerment. They know that getting in touch with a level of consciousness that is greater than them will nurture and enrich them. And they ultimately want their inner guidance to navigate them back to their true nature, no matter how far they've wandered. 
So the ability to connect to that higher wisdom Mm -hmm. is what opens a new gateway for their balance, their growth, and their contentment. And once we're on the path, we can love ourselves, we can love others, and we can be of service. So we can loosen the shackles of our suffering from the food cravings, which will recede back like into an old cupboard. Which of the passages do you find most useful in your own life? One of the passages that I really find useful, it's a very simple passage. It says... Do I have to say this? Do I have to say this now? And does this even need to be said by me? When I'm in a situation where I sort of have an into uh, an urge to say something, mm-hmm. when I say that to myself, it causes me to take a pause. And I think I've been very grateful for a lot of the pauses I've taken. Connie, over the last, what is it, 37 years, how many people do you think you've helped? Well, Rob, I have helped many, many people. Um, I'm very, very interested in the personal development field. Mm -hmm. I've been a coach and a facilitator, and I've had the opportunity to witness people's transformation as they embrace undiscovered aspects of themselves. And I have been struck by how often I see people gain tremendous inner awareness and that year after year, sometimes they get no closer to reaching their goals and the lives that they want. Mm -hmm. So it just became clear to me that what determines whether we'll wind up with contentment, again, it's the choices that we make on a day-to-day basis. Life is a choice from the moment we're born to the moment we pass on to the next level. Absolutely. You know, I was talking to Peter Wolford earlier this week. He's written a fascinating book called The Genesis Grid. And it seems that our very existence is a binary, two simple digits, zero, one. And within our lifetimes, we have yes, no, right, left, in, out, up, down, good, evil, black, white. It seems that for every pro, there's a con. And that's why, uh, you know, when people say, well, there is no choice in life. Oh, yes, you have choices. Choices abound each and every day. What would you say to someone who who came to you and said, you know what, Connie, I don't believe we have any choices. Everything's predestined. Well, Rob, Rob, wonderful question. Um, Little Gifts of Sustainable Contentment is designed to stop you in your tracks before you make a choice that will lead you somewhere other than where you really want to go. The affirmations help you to clarify the things you want in each area of your life and identify the daily, weekly, and monthly behaviors that will support the fulfillment of your desires. This book is is divided into seven chapters. There is a chapter on emotional contentment, intellectual Mm -hmm. contentment, spiritual, financial, emotional, and social. So in all areas of our lives, we can find help from this book. Connie, please stand by. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Great having you with us. I love your inspiration and I love the way you think. Exo Nation, our special guest this hour is Connie Good. Her website is sustainablecontentment.com. And she's the author of Little Gifts of Sustainable Contentment. Connie and I will return on the other side of this commercial break with the news as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and Star Cable. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net.
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Exxon Nation, my special guest this hour is Connie Good. She's the author of Little Gifts of Sustainable Contentment, which will be coming out this summer. Her website is www.sustainablecontentment.com. Connie, why do you think there are so many people who turn to to food and, and, and other things, you know, instead of... Like this, it's it's. Let me let me rephrase that. It seems that as as we go on in time, more and more people are becoming overeaters. They're becoming uh, overindulgers. Why and what can be done to stop it? That's a great question, Rob. I think that in talking with some of my colleagues and mm-hmm. friends who have not yet stepped into a complete and fulfilling life, they're instead just watching, waiting, hoping. They have dreams, but no tools for manifesting them into reality. And I found through experience that there is a proven and realistic method of action that one can use for creating a contented life and for getting relief from those cravings. And I'm not talking about the fleeting type of contentment, but a real sustainable contentment. And one of the ways that was helpful to me was joining some support groups and getting help from people and input from other people who have the same affliction. And we help each other to get a daily reprieve. Do you find people fall off the wagon if they're not part of a support group? Yes, we do find people falling off the wagon. And one of the ways that has helped me to address that is, and, and, and if any of your listeners out there are suffering from this or other problems such as losing their job, mm-hmm. this will help you too. This is for people who are struggling with all kinds of things, all kinds of personal crises and challenges. We all need some kind of a window of opening And one thing that I did is I began creating sculptures and artwork and vessels and collages and paintings. And that was just a wonderful, cathartic way to get my mind away from overindulging and into something that really helps other people. And I just want to tell your listeners that if they go to my website, sustainablecontentment.com, and sign up on my contact page, I am going to send them a beautiful gift with a purchase, an original piece of my artwork, a piece of spiritual artwork with spiritual messages, and they can print that out and frame it. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Thank you. Mm -hmm. What is the number one cause, in, in your opinion, and after speaking to so many people that you have, that people do become excessive or obsessive and and they need to find a supplement in life. And that's all all they're doing is they're just filling a hole, if I I understand the, uh, the psychology of it. Yes, they have a hole. It could be created by anxiety. It could be because they feel like they're not living up to other people's expectations. Mm -hmm very difficult to navigate that chasm and food becomes a source of comfort or a source of medication for them and I have discovered that 
when I recite these short daily after affirmations, mm-hmm. that they really tack a big punch. Spending just one minute reading these affirmations seems to produce the kind of personal change that reflects outwardly. And I'm evidently getting closer to my hidden potential and my higher self. And I've emerged out of this mediocre, fearful living and into a much, much happier place. So I am very grounded in reality, and I do not use food or trinkets anymore to fill that void of not belonging. I no longer feel that I'm less than. So many moments used to pass me by on a daily basis because of that overindulgence, Mm -hmm. but now I look at life as a collection of treasured moments to savor. So by by doing the affirmations, are we actually also sitting back and taking time to acknowledge ourselves? Are we slowing down the pace of life so that we can actually appreciate ourselves and say, hey, I'm doing something for me that, that is good for me, that is positive for me, that's going to make a positive change in my life? Yes. This is a book for these times, for this day and age, because so many of us have done a lot of work on ourselves. We set goals, we say affirmations, but we're still that frustrated because we're not achieving our goals. So what this book is about is getting us where we want to go in our lives. It's about taking action. And the truth is that in our actions, we can dictate the course of our lives. So Little Gifts of Sustainable Contentment brings us face-to-face with the reality that we are the ones who direct our course. And whether we will live a life of fulfillment or regret, it all comes down, again, to the choices that we make. So we're also taking responsibility for our actions. Absolutely, yes. And I would, I would imagine that that's a big part of understanding that, number one, there is a problem. Number two, we can, we can solve the problem. Number three, we are responsible for our own actions. And number four, we do have choices. We have choices and we have support groups that can help us design programs, eating plans, or develop boundaries for us that we can stay within. There are lots and lots of ways we can get help. We can hire coaches to help us, facilitators to help us. Just taking that first step is the beginning of a major transformation. You know, these are these are hard economics economic times, Connie. And I'm sure there are many people out there who can't afford personal trainers, personal coaches. What alternative do they have? Well, this book, Little Gifts of Sustainable Contentment, it provides a roadmap to your desired destination. Mm -hmm. Very small investment. So whether your desired goal is to improve the area of relationships, career, health, well-being, finances, or something else, the book will support you in bringing your daily choices into alignment with your goals. By reciting the affirmations, again, you get aligned with contentment in all areas of your life, and your behavior changes and your choices change. Sounds like a fantastic uh, concept that you've come up with. Uh, What are some of the changes of people that you've worked with in the past that you're able to share with us? Well, we know that human beings are very gifted and they have precious creative abilities. Mm -hmm. And because they have these abilities, they have the power to choose how they want to use it. And if they decide to exercise their power to create their own destiny, then individually and collectively, they can begin to awaken to the unconscious patterns of their past and actually manifest the things that they want in their lives. So nothing feeds our soul more than knowing that we have made good choices for ourselves. All right, but my question was, can you share with us some stories of people who have, ha- who have changed their lives and how by using the, the method and the technique that you're going to be telling people about in your book that's coming out this summer called Little Gifts of Sustainable Contentment? Yes, well, we all go through suffering Uh, We lose our jobs, we lose a relationship, there could be a death. And what this book is about is not eating over these tragedies, 
but finding the jewel in it, finding the gold, seeing what the gift is. It's an integration process. And this book is about using our overindulgence and our overeating as a catalyst to find hope and contentment. Oh, okay. So basically what you're doing is, how, how, would, you, how would you summarize how your book works? Well, I keep my, the book by my bedside, mm-hmm. and every day I read it for about one minute. Right. It gets me grounded. It takes me to a place of balance. So then I, when I go through my day, I'm able to stay very calm and very content. Now, sometimes I can encounter... For example, someone at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for a parking space patiently, and all of a sudden a sports car will pull into the space that I had been patiently waiting for, and I'll get very frustrated and upset. When this occurs, my 999 contentment channel gets readjusted, Mm -hmm. and I end up in the agitated frequency, maybe channel 111 and I can feel my heart beating, and I start to get frustrated. These are the kinds of things that can be a trigger for overeating or overindulgence. So when I read the affirmations, I can immediately feel the shift, starting to head back up the radio spectrum, back to channel 999. So they are really helpful in getting us back to feeling comfortable and balanced so that we can deal with life in a very calm, intelligent manner without the anger, without the frustration, without the upheaval. Tell me about some of the artwork that's in your book. Well, I was an artist for about 10 years, and I gave all of my artwork to a foundation for homeless women Mm-hmm. Because what I've learned from this book is that art can be a form of therapy, and I want to give back what I was so generously given. The art was a healing process, and I passed it on, and it feels very good to do that. The book contains 12 original images, and the pain that I endured during my period of overeating and overindulging, was put into remission when I engaged in these creative projects. So if your listeners go to my website and sign up, give me their email address, when they make a book purchase, they will receive an original piece of artwork as a special gift from me. Now, when does your book actually come out? I understand it's coming out later this summer, and where will it be available? The book will be available on Amazon.com, and it will be coming out the first week of August 2010. What was the hardest part for you writing your book? The hardest part? Yeah. Like every author has one part of the book where they just can't... they, They get a block. And they, every, every author I've ever talked to says there's always one part of their book that was the hardest part for them. And which part was that for you? Well, the hardest part for me was writing about the higher plan, quote-unquote. I believe that each of us has two plans. There is a higher plan for us, and then there is a default plan that comes from our automatic programming, from our past, our conditioning. Mm -hmm. The default program is filled with a lot of excuses, a lot of whims, a lot of unconscious reactions. And when we act from the default, we do not really move closer to our dreams. We, rather, we stay stuck in repetitive patterns and habitual behaviors that don't work for us. 
So the hardest part was encouraging readers to trust that there is a higher plan. It is a plan that encourages everyone's individual potential, everyone's expansion and optimization. And that if they just step back and allow that plan to unfold, then they will follow their heart's desire and end up with a beautiful, contented life. Connie, stand by. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. Exo Nation, our special guest this hour is Connie Good. Her website is sustainablecontentment.com, and the book that she's written with that's coming out in August that will be available on Amazon.com is Little Gifts of Sustainable Contentment. Once again, her website is www.sustainablecontentment.com. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon Radio Show, coming to you around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. 19 stars in the central. 19 stars, you check. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Connie Good is my special guest this first hour of tonight's show, X-Zone Nation. And uh, Connie is the author of a book entitled Little Gifts of Sustainable Contentment. Her website is www.sustainablecontentment.com. And the book will be coming out this coming August. It will be available on Amazon.com. Connie, how can people face the daily challenges that they have, whether at work, school, or, or even on the drive home? Well, Rob... When someone is at work and, for example, if their boss says something to them that causes distress at a very deep level, Mm -hmm. how should they react to that? When I come up against that kind of situation, there are some tools that I use. And especially I need to be sure that I don't eat over it or overindulge over it or overconsume over it. I've always derived a lot of benefits from supportive groups who meet weekly at Mm -hmm. various locations. I listen to suggestions, and I develop a new language to deal with a conflict that comes my way, whether it's at work or elsewhere. So when someone such as a boss or a colleague or a family member is treating me in a way that feels uncomfortable, a supportive group environment really can provide the clarity when I feel I've been offended. And another useful tool is note-taking, writing down the area of your life that is not allowed for a breakthrough, for instance. Mm -hmm. Let's say you want a relationship. If you write your thoughts about it, what's not manifesting, what are your desires, what are you afraid of, 
you can really get some clarity with that process. Isn't there the possibility, though, that the person may become over-dependent on the group and not be able to function by themselves? And how do people prevent that from happening? Well, any time we allow ourselves to be crushed under the heel of self-limitation or negative dialogues, Sometimes people say to themselves, oh, if I could just lose 20 pounds, I'll finally be happy. Happy. They end up surrendering their life. And so being around a supportive group kind of helps them stay balanced and stay focused. I understand that, but isn't there the danger of dependency with that group? And they're not able to think on their own. They, They rely too much on the collective instead of on their own individuality. I don't think so. I think that it's equivalent to having a group of friends, a group of very close friends, Mm -hmm. and you can call upon them to share your frustrations, your anxiety, and you can get some advice. And then you use the tools of the affirmations to help you make an intelligent decision. The affirmations are about making the right choices and making the right decisions. Connie, the decision I have to make right now is we've run out of time. I want to thank you so much for joining us here tonight on the X-Zone. X-Zone Nation, Connie's book is going to be coming out this coming August. It will be available at Amazon.com. The name of the book is Little Gifts of Sustainable Contentment, and Connie's website is www.sustainablecontentment.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as the X-Zone continues live and around the world from our studios here in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. We'll be back right after the news at six and a half minutes past the hour. 